Syrian boy's life turned around after volunteers helped him undergo the necessary surgery. A meningitis patient becomes a giver after long-term caring by volunteers. Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Simon Gunn. Thank you for joining us. A 14-year-old Syrian boy was diagnosed of Crohn's disease in 2011. The war had delayed his treatment, but fortunately, Sushi Jordan chapter helped him undergo the necessary surgery. Let's see his story. If we let him go back to, to the home, we may lose him. Coming from, from uh, his back. From here. 14 year old Syrian boy Osama Mother is crying pain. He was diagnosed with Crohn's disease nine years ago and has never received treatment. He fled from Syria to Jordan due to the civil war and is now seriously ill. He has uh, a serious problem in his uh, abdomen. Uh, he can't eat. Uh, he is very weak. The disease uh, called Crohn's disease. While his parents worried about him, they did not know where to go to seek help. My child is living in pain. Could kind-hearted people help him, all right? Three months after the surgery, emaciated Osama has gained weight, but he still needs anti-pneumonia vaccine. Through the help of Tima pharmacist Wang Zhiming, a Taiwanese pharmaceutical company has delivered the medicine to Jordan with a discount. It saved the patient 5,200 U.S. dollars in medical cost. We can form positive affinities with him and turn his life around. Now Osama can walk and his weight will increase from 18 kilograms to 30 kilograms. It is amazing. Even the doctor thinks it is amazing. Seeing the rebirth of the child, Dr. Mohammad, who is usually serious and stern, is deeply touched. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, when uh, Mr. Chen uh, has told me uh, for one hour about uh, the health and he's very be be better now, uh, I feel that I, w I want to cry, <laughs> and something is uh, falls uh, on my face. Osama's every little step marks immense improvement. This is not the end of the care volunteers. They continue to provide care even after he goes home. Thank you for performing a surgery on my son. If not, he would have almost died. <laughs> this picture with me, <laughs> 22 years. As Typhoon Hagibis made landfall in Japan during mid-October, it brought about much destruction to parts of Nagano City. Such so volunteers were the first to arrive and hosted a hot meal distribution for those still recovering from the windstorm. Typhoon Hagibus destroyed thousands of homes in Japan. Though they are a four-hour car ride away, hearts of the volunteers from Tsuji Japan chapter is very much with the disaster victims. <laughs> Volunteers decided to provide them with a hot meal to show their care. On the 3rd of November, the team gathered to plan out the logistics of the hot meal distribution, taste test the meal which will be provided, and purchase the ingredients needed for the meal. The following few days, the team went over things to pay attention to for a distribution day and also wash and sterilize the container bowls to hold the food. Oh. The day before the distribution, volunteers were in the kitchen working well into the night to make sure the food was cooked well and the jinsu tea was made. Suji's eco-friendly blanket was even put to use to keep the food warm. Bye-bye. 
We'll station ourselves at 11 and prepare for the event. The distribution begins at 11.30. The volunteers quickly packed 50 bowls to send to the Toyonomachi town office. Meanwhile, at the distribution site, the local residents are warmed by the bowl of hot rice in their hands. When we held a bowl of vegetable medley rice, it was still hot, even though you brought it from Tokyo. Very many local residents came, so it was gone quite quickly. As these residents are still in the throes of recovery, this hot meal from Tsuji is sure to warm their hearts, and now they know that Tsuji volunteers are right alongside them spiritually. A group of Japanese students came to Hualien Tsuji Senior High School for an exchange. Let's see how the Japanese students feel about the visit. Our school meets 114 anniversary. Speaking of fluent English, they are the students from Iwate Prefectural Morioka Daiichi High School, established 137 years ago. The school is designated by the Ministry of Education and Science of Japan as a super globalized high school. The students went to Chiji Senior High School on an exchange, trying to understand the difference in educational culture between Taiwan and Japan. I have not come across a school with grades from kindergarten to high school. I am also surprised to see students from other countries coming here to study. It is different from our local schools. It turns out that it is already internationalized here. In order to gain a deep understanding of the learning environment of Chiji Senior High School, these 12 Japanese high school students joined a class to actually experience the study atmosphere. Through this visit, students from Rose schools can also broaden their horizons, making them become more competitive internationally. On the evening of November 11, a fire broke out in Jiai City, Taiwan, and burned down 12 wooden houses. Fortunately, no one was hurt. A fire broke out at Jiai City and burned for around an hour, destroying 12 houses. Fortunately, nobody was injured, but everything in the houses was destroyed. Chiji volunteers arrived at the scene the following morning to evaluate the condition and also to give out one blanket and one set of emergency cash to every surviving family. It's nice that everyone is safe. The blanket was made from plastic bottles. When he saw the blanket, he was like seeing warmth and also the hope. We also gave him emergency cash and this can help him. Chiji volunteers bring best wishes to comfort its survivors. Volunteer Pan Mei happened to see her daughter's long-lost friend. I was so excited, she almost cried and almost cried too. I was extremely happy because we had been trying to find her, but we couldn't. But when I saw her here, I was extremely delighted. This accident caught them all off guard. 
but the love in the world will support them to recover again. 54-year-old Lai Wenxuan contracted meningitis when he was young, and due to the spreading of his lumbar disc disease, his hands and feet have been left useless. However, his positivity towards life has been very inspiring. Let's take a look. I've been doing this for about three years now. Each day is about the same. I repeat the same exercise. Because the circulation in my left hand isn't good, it feels numb all the time. It will turn cold. My right hand is good, my left isn't. So I will hit it to get the circulation going and keep a positive outlook. He said his mattress collapsed and it was uncomfortable to sleep. The original was from the landlord, so we went to the market in Beito to look for a new one for him. It was like two or three months after I moved in, and this side collapsed because I always do my exercises here. I'm not greedy. I'm happy to have something I can use. Maybe people may think differently, but just like the Master says, if you think of this place as heaven, then life will be good. If you want to think of this place as hell, then it will seem like I am locked up here. I've been locked up here for two or three years. I haven't gone downstairs because someone needs to carry me if I want to leave the house. So I haven't left the house in two or three years. But I feel like I get plenty of loving care here. For example, I get visits from the Ziji volunteers and from my sister and friends. Some people say I live in a jail, but that's not how I think. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I was thinking, oh, today, 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 I feel since I have the ability to help, I insist on always donating 10 NT dollars. 1 NT and 10 NT makes a world of difference. If 1 NT can help one person, then 10 NT can help 10 people. This is why I always donate 10 NT at a time. Overseas Tsuji volunteers from various countries return to their spiritual hometown in Hualien. Let's take a look. It is the first time for an African volunteer to hold a handbell and a temple block. She registered for a class to learn from the master in Jinshi Abo and hoped that she could use Buddhist musical instruments in her hometown one day. I'm not familiar with this instrument and found it difficult to use it. I'll practice more, maybe better later. To understand the basic meaning of three bows and how to react when listen to the handbell and the meaning of the gesture when worshipping the Buddha. Another group of African volunteers are learning ways to conduct interviews and taking photos. They will become documenting volunteers, recording touching stories in the future. Through today's sharing, I know more about what documenting volunteers need to do. I also took some photos of the course and keep record, because I want to bring this information home and let everyone know about their tasks. Overseas volunteers return to the spiritual home of Chiji, attending classes and having a tour. They also visited Jinshi Hall to better understand Chiji's principles, so they can share Dharma teachings with the people in their countries. 
In today's feature on doctors, we'll introduce you to the original doctor that was staffed at the Dou Liu Cixi Hospital, Dr. Tai Renbi. Let's get to know him a little bit more. In the past 10 years, Li Rongshen, who has polycystic kidney disease, has had to report to dialysis three times a week at the Dou Liu Cixi Hospital. In his eyes, Dr. Tsai Ren Bi is his lifesaver. One time I was experiencing massive kidney hemorrhaging and the doctor saved my life. If he hadn't, I probably wouldn't be here today. When Dr. Tsai was a senior in high school, his mother was diagnosed with cancer, which inspired him to major in medicine. After he graduated from Hualien Cixi University, he began serving at the Daolin Cixi Hospital. As he was very dedicated in his work, in 2008, the superintendent of the hospital asked him to head to the Dolio Clinic to set up the hemodialysis room. When we first went there, there were very few residents. We couldn't ask the patients from Daolin to go there for treatment, so it was really starting from zero. He spent a lot of time at Dou Liu, and in the beginning he would have to be in two places. He'd have to take care of the dialysis patients here and the medical quality, while also looking after the administrative staff for Da Ling. The medical and hospital community over there were worried we were out to steal their patients. In the end, they came to realize we weren't and we had our own patient crowd. It turns out we established a pretty good relationship with the local Douliu doctors after all. The past 10 years of quality medical care in Douliu has helped the team win many distinguished awards, with the Silver Tower of Taiwan Continuous Improvement Award for Kidney Care to be one of them. However, three years ago, Dr. Tai's health could not keep up with the spirits and took a turn for the worst. He had to remove his right thyroid, and earlier this year, he began having heart issues. It turned out I had some cardiovascular problems. One artery was blocked about 50 percent, while another was about 20 percent. When you suffer from such a problem, perhaps when we are educating patients on certain topics, it will hold more truth. Like after I started exercising, I began to implore my patients to exercise as well. As a patient himself, Dr. Tsai can fully understand how his patients feel and uses his own experience to encourage patients to keep up their health and spirit. Southeast Asian caregivers account for 88% of the total caregivers in Taiwan and are on call almost 24 hours a day. The physical and mental stress is too much to imagine as we learn more about their difficult lives. <laughs> Olian has been a caregiver in Taiwan for six years. She helps an elderly woman massage her neck and arms. The lady she cares for has mobility issues. This caregiver, who has received nursing training, helps massage her and turns her over at an appointed time every day. I'll prepare breakfast for her, give her dinner, give her medicine. After she takes medicine, I'll take her blood pressure and turn her over every two hours. I also ask her if she's not feeling well. There are about 295,000 caregivers in Taiwan. Foreign caregivers such as Olian account for about 260,000 people, or 88 percent of this group. This means there are only 35,000 domestic caregivers. Of the foreign caregivers, 240,000 people have been assigned to families, and 15,000 are in health care institutions, such as medical institutions. That is to say, there are 240,000 families with elderly grandparents dependent on foreign caregivers. Without these foreign caregivers, it would be difficult for Taiwan's elderly people to enjoy their old age. In the news, we often see unfortunate incidents involving foreign caregivers, but these are just a few isolated incidents, about 260,000 foreign caregivers. Foreign caregivers have been a great help caring for Taiwan's aging community. He 
She took care of my dad from June to December last year. Even the nurse saw that he didn't have any hemorrhoids, which is a strong credit to her. My father passed away in December last year, and she began to care for my mother. Olian took care of Miss Wu's father and mother one after another, so that she wouldn't have to worry. The attention of Olian was that of a member of the family. In fact, she has been in contact with our family for more than a year. So when my father passed away last year, she did the most crying. I also comforted her during this time. I'll find a way to keep her because she's already like one of our family. Filipino care worker Lisa and others took advantage of a day off on Sunday as they cooked their hometown food in the Taoyuan City Care Workers Union, helping heal their homesickness. The first time I came to Taiwan, didn't have a break for three years, and then I came to Taiwan for the second time. I know many friends. I go out because if we're Filipino, we'll say, hey, are you from the Philippines? We'll chat and exchange FB contacts. Foreign care workers like Lisa get only a few days off every week. The average salary for Taiwan caregivers is 1300 to 2100 U.S. dollars, which foreign caregivers just get 600 U.S. dollars, though they are almost always on call 24 hours a day, and their pressure is great. According to the survey, the proportion of foreign caregivers who don't take off any days throughout the year is as high as 34.7 percent, and 54.1 percent only get off one day a week, even though it may not be a full day off. Many employers say that if you go out, but in fact it's not a full day off. When going out, they may first need to prepare breakfast in the morning for grandfather or change their diapers. And then when they come back, they may need to prepare dinner or other things. A lot of caregivers joke that in Taiwan, Sundays are much shorter than average days. With foreign migrant workers engaged in factory work, fishing, and caregiving, despite this relatively low-level labor work, many do not give up on their dreams of self-improvement. The 140 organization helps cultivate these migrant workers through education. Our organization has always had a clear core goal and mission for its founding to more than four years now. That is to make every Southeast Asian migrant worker in Taiwan enjoy their time in Taiwan and make it valuable and inspiring. Hi, 大家好。呃，我叫杨丽。我找到一个很好的工作，在台湾的工厂上翻译。After getting training from 140, she returned to her home country to find a good job for herself or start her own business. Yanni is one such successful case. Because the average salary in Indonesia is about 300 U.S. dollars a month, but her current translation work pays her more than 600 U.S. dollars, we believe that she has turned her life around and has exceeded all of our expectations for her. Foreign caregivers leave their country to come to Taiwan to take care of the elderly, who often suffer from limited mobility. They have extreme work pressure, which can be almost 24 hours a day. They are the most important link in our elder care system. However, they also need to be appreciated and better compensated for their hard work and dedication to their employers. Through drawing, a group of elderly students at the Beitou Humanitarian Class recollects their most beautiful memories. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you and goodbye.